In this video, I am going to show you how to compute a confidence interval using the TI-84 calculator. So let's look at an example. Uh, in a recent study, 50 randomly selected students agreed to take a new intelligence test. The mean score was 41 with a standard deviation of 2.5. And we are to construct a 95% confidence interval to estimate the mean score of all students on this new test. Okay, so our goal here is to estimate the population mean at 95%. And our point estimate for this confidence interval is the sample mean. So our point estimate is x bar, which is 41. So 41 is going to be in the center of my confidence interval. Okay, uh, there are a couple things we need to check first. The first thing we need to check, uh, we need either, we need one of these two things to be true in order to do this. Either n has to be greater than or equal to 30, uh, or uh, the population has to be uh, normally distributed. Now the, the problem, the information we're given in the problem doesn't say anything about this being normally distributed, but we do have a sample of 50, uh, which means we're, we're okay to proceed. Now the next question you want to ask yourself is, uh, when we're estimating a mean, in some cases we use uh, the Z distribution, and in some cases we use the T distribution. Uh, again, when I, mean, when I say Z distribution, I mean uh, the normal distribution. And we have to make this decision when we're estimating a mean. And what it depends on, uh, do we know the standard deviation for the sample or do we know the standard deviation for the population? Okay. Um, we use the normal distribution if we know sigma, which is the population standard deviation. Okay. If we only know the sample mean, or S, if we know S, which is the sample standard deviation, we use the T distribution. Okay, so that's what we want to look at. Look at the standard deviation you're given. Uh, is it just from the sample or is it for the entire population? Uh, and in this case, uh, all we're given is the mean and standard deviation from our sample of 50. So in our case, uh, we only know S. And this is the typical this is usually the case. Okay, Usually you're only going to have the sample data because if we had the population standard deviation it's likely we would know the population mean and if we know the population mean there's really no reason for us to estimate the population mean. So uh, in, in real, real life it's, it's pretty rare that you would actually know uh, sigma in this case. So usually when we estimate a mean we're going to use the t-distribution but but not always. Okay, So in this example we are going to use uh, the T distribution which means to do this in our calculator we're going to press stat, we're going to go over to tests and we are going to do T interval which is choice number eight, T interval. Uh, again if you do know the population standard deviation you would use Z interval but we do not so we are going to use T interval. Okay. And in this case, we are going to go over to stats because we've been given the stats. If you need to enter raw data, you want the data to be highlighted, but we're going to enter the stats. And the first thing it asks us for is the sample mean, which is 41. The next thing it asks us for is the sample standard deviation, which is 2.5. Then it wants the sample size, which is 50. And then it wants the confidence level, which is 95%. So those are the four values I'm going to enter. And then I'm going to press enter again, and it is going to give me my confidence interval. Well, in this case is 40.29 comma 41.71. So that's a pretty good estimate. So again, based on our sample of 50 students, the sample mean was 41. Uh, based off that, our 95% confidence interval estimate for the population mean, uh, we're estimating that 
uh, the mean of all students who take this test is going to be somewhere between 40.29 and 41.71. Okay. Uh, again, our point estimate is 41, so we want to, if we want to give this in the other notation, uh, we would say that our confidence interval is 41 plus or minus the margin of error. And if we if we look at the lower and upper bound of my interval, it looks like the margin of error is 0 0.71 because the upper bound of my interval is 41 plus 0 0.71 and the lower bound is 41 minus 0 0.71. So 0 0.71 is the margin of error. Okay, so that's E, the margin of error. Okay, so let's take a look at one more example. Okay, so what we have here uh, in the table are the miles per gallon for 16 randomly selected 2011 Ford Focus automobiles. So we took a random sample of 16 of these vehicles and uh, we recorded their average miles per gallon. Uh, now notice our sample is only 16, which is not the required 30. Okay, again, we want uh, the sample size to be greater than or equal to 30, which it is not, but we are going to do this under the assumption that miles per gallon is normally distributed, which means we are okay. So even though our sample size is not 30, we are okay because we're assuming that the population is normally distributed. Okay? If that was not a fair assumption for us to make, then we would need more information uh, to get a 95% confidence interval. But we are okay to proceed uh, with what's given here. Okay, and our again, our job is to estimate uh, the population mean. So in other words, what is the mean miles per gallon for every 2011 Ford Focus based off our sample mean of, well, we don't know yet because we were given raw data. Okay, so the first step here is to enter our data. So I'm going to go to stat and I'm just going to edit and I'm going to put this data into L1. Okay, so I have entered all of the data, and once you've entered all of the data, we're going to go to stat, and we're going to go to the same place. We're going to go to T interval. Uh, we are not going to use Z interval because we do not know the population standard deviation. We only have sample data, which means the only standard deviation we know is from the sample. So unless you know the population standard deviation, you are going to do T interval when you estimate a mean. So I'm going to press enter. And now I don't know the stats yet. I only have the data. So I'm going to go over and highlight data. And then I'm going to tell it to take data from list one. Okay, if you put your data in a different list, you would change it right here. So we want to use the data that's in list one. For frequency, you want that to say one. And we want, again, a 95% confidence level. And I'm going to calculate that. Uh, notice it does tell me that the sample mean is 36.8. Uh, that's good to know because that's my point estimate. And my 95% confidence interval is 35.246 to 38.354. Okay, that's my 95% confidence interval for the miles per gallon of a 2011 Ford Focus. So our 95% estimate is that the mean of all 2011 Ford Focuses uh, miles per gallon is somewhere between these two values. It's somewhere between 35 and 38 uh, miles per gallon. Okay. Um, if we want to write it in the other notation, uh, again, the other form is our point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. So in this case, that would be 36.8 plus or minus the margin of error. To find the margin of error, uh, again, I just need to find the difference between, say, that upper bound, uh, 38.354, and I'm going to subtract my point estimate, which was 36.8. So my margin of error is 1.554. And if you want to check that, uh, you'll notice that uh, 36.8 minus 1.554 happens to be the lower bound of our confidence level. So again, your point estimate 36.8 is right in the center of our confidence 
interval. And we add 1.554 miles per gallon to get the upper end, and we subtract it to get the lower end. So the point estimate is right in the middle. Okay, so that's how we find a confidence interval to estimate the population mean given sample data. I hope you found this helpful.